The New Orleans Pelicans might be the most underrated team in the NBA right now. They obviously have their two stars in Zion and Ingram, but their phenomenal collection of role players around them makes me think this team is built for a real run. Trey Murphy and Herb Jones might be the ideal role players for the modern NBA, and you also have another 20 a night guy in CJ McCollum, not to mention the rest of the pieces. The wide range of rim pressure, shooting, shot creation, playmaking, and defense on this roster makes me think they could compete with just about anyone. Utilizing Zion as a primary ball handler has opened up new doors for the Pelicans. They also have an ability to win games despite less than gaudy stats from their superstars, partially due to both Zion and Ingram's impact beyond the stat sheet and partially due to the collection of pieces around them. The Pelicans are 15-5 and five in their last 20 and are getting hot at the right time. Today I'm going to be spelling out why I think the New Orleans Pelicans could be a real problem in the Western Conference playoffs and how they elevated from fringe playoff team to elite team without much core roster movement. Before we get into this, if y'all could like the video, sub to the channel, hit that noti bell, I would really, really appreciate it. Smaller NBA YouTuber trying to grow, you know, we on the road to 4K right now, so if y'all could hit that, I would really, really appreciate it. And without further ado, let's get right into the video. I'm going to start with the man that has unlocked another part of his game and another level for this team, Zion Williamson. First off, I'd just like to say how happy I am to see him back consistently. The discourse around Zion was very strange and still is. People acting like he isn't the player he's supposed to be is also strange. This man put up 27 a night on over 61% from the field in 61 games at 20 years old. Skepticism about his injuries that isn't just plain weird? Fine. But people thinking Zion wasn't an elite basketball player was funny to me. And now, despite a scoring dip, Zion is playing some of his best basketball in a new role as a primary ball handler. I knew Zion was a solid passer, but having him fully unlocked as an offensive initiator was something I never even imagined. Zion handles the ball in the pick and roll with the big, and you pretty much always have three snipers out there. Whether it's Trey, Herb, CJ, Najee, Hawkins, or B.I., and even Larry Nance is shooting just shy of 43% from deep, or one of the multiple other guys shooting a good number from three. I cut the list there because I'm going to get more into that later, but basically the unreal amount of spacing around Zion is also what has unlocked him in this role. He is scoring less than his past two seasons, but don't let that fool you. Zion having the shooters to dish out to is great, but having to guard these shooters also opens up the game for him as a scorer, and as of late, Zion has gotten back into his scoring bag. Over his past five games, one of which was against the Cavs' top three defense, Zion has been showing that that scoring didn't go anywhere. Over his past five games against the Hawks, Cavs, Clippers, Blazers, and Nets, Zion Williamson is averaging 38-4 and four on 66.3% from the field, 0% from three, and 75% from the line for a true shooting percentage of 69.4%. His even further lack of three-point shooting is also a result of this spacing. If Zion has the ball in his hands and everyone on the court can shoot, including him who's a 35% career three-point shooter, how often is he going to end up shooting a three? The answer, like once every three games. Zion having the ability to shoot but almost never needing to utilize it is scary. His 0% from 3 is because he didn't shoot one 3 in these 5 games. You can't leave him and you can't leave anyone else and that is the key that unlocks this whole team. Brandon Ingram is one of the most underrated passers and playmakers in the league. His frame and scoring ability and I believe in large part his comparison to Kevin Durant made him known as a scorer to the casual fan but Brandon Ingram impacts the game in a multitude of ways. Ingram's ability to facilitate with the amount of spacing on this roster is another key and while doing this he's also had the space to score when needed. Now is when I'm going to come back to the point about this team being able to win despite numbers from their stars that most would dismiss today. The Pelicans are 20-8 and eight this season when Brandon Ingram scores less than 20 points. Most people would take this statement as an insult to Ingram and his impact, but it's actually quite the opposite. He and Zion's abilities to make reads and passes combined with the spacing and shooting present here is what makes me really believe in this Pelicans team. Despite all of this, I can understand a concern with thinking that a guy that was near 25 a night last year that's down to 21 could have regressed scoring wise, but when he has the volume, BI has shown that, like Zion, that hasn't gone anywhere. In 17 games this season where he took 20 or more shots, Brandon Ingram is averaging 28, 6, and 6 on 50% from the field, 31% from 3, and 79% from the line for a true shooting percentage nearly identical to his season number, 57.9%. Ingram still having the ability to be a volume scorer when needed is very reassuring. Come playoffs, oftentimes it becomes about the stars, and if Zion and Ingram both need to take 20 shots, I feel great about that prospect. Now for the rest of the pieces, and as I've been saying, this is what makes this team what they are. I will be discussing a number of guys, but I want to start with Herb Jones. 
I said in my video about the Pelicans from the summer that he was league average three-point shooting from becoming elite, and he completely blew this out of the water. The three-point shooting improvement this season from Herb is nothing short of unbelievable. Over his first two seasons, Herb had nearly identical stats from deep, shooting 33.7% from deep on 2.2 attempts a game as a rookie, and 33.5% from deep on 2.5 attempts last season. These aren't unplayable numbers, but are far from ideal in today's league, and Herb clearly realized that, as this season Herbert Jones is shooting 43.3% from deep on three and a half attempts a night. We all know what Herb gets into on the defensive end and becoming not only a serviceable shooter but an elite one makes him an absolutely elite role player. The even better part for New Orleans, a guy who's providing 20 to 25 million dollar value is under contract for this year and the next three at around 12, 13, 14, and 15 million. With Trey Murphy and Brandon Ingram's extensions coming up, Contracts like these will be critical to keeping this core together. Trey Murphy is another piece that is a huge part of the immense spacing on this Pelican team. The lanky forward is an absolute sniper and has upped his three-point volume this season. He is one of the main spacers that helps everything else, largely due to his ability to shoot from well beyond the three-point line. Trey's shot distance is actually funny because he is shooting 36.5% on 96-24 footers and 38.5% on 213-25-29 footers. Trey can not only shoot threes, but can pull up from anywhere, and having not only snipers, but dynamic ones like Trey is a key for a highly effective modern offense. Murphy also embodies the threes and layups or dunks school of thought, as 88% of his 457 field goal attempts this season are either threes or inside five feet. Trey's finishing has also been effective when needed, as he is shooting a whopping 78.1% from inside 5 feet on about 1.7 attempts a night. Trey Murphy is due for a big payday, and it's absolutely coming, and it will absolutely be worth it. The 23-year-old will only continue improving, and I believe he could be an efficient 20-a-night guy already in a situation more centered around him. A guy who has gone very under the radars despite still putting him work in his 30s is CJ McCollum. He is averaging 18-4-4 four four with some of the best shooting from deep of his career considering volume. He is a supplementary playmaker and shot creator for this Pelicans team. Having a ton of shooters is great, but striking a balance with straight shooters and shot creators is where you see elite offenses. CJ has taken a bit of a backseat compared to his other time in New Orleans, but has moved his game to even more three-point shooting while increasing his efficiency there. No longer is CJ a main focal point of a team, but he has moved into a tertiary scoring role gracefully and is contributing in New Orleans. While I would love to dive into more guys individually, instead I'm going to make a point about the rest of the roster as a unit. I knew the Pelicans had an unreal amount of spacing, but going to look at the numbers earlier just blew me away. Only one person who's getting consistent minutes for this team isn't a good shooter. Outside of Dyson Daniels, basically the entire Pelicans rotation are good or elite three-point shooters. Let's run down the numbers. Herb Jones, 43.3% on three and a half attempts. Larry Nance, 42.3% on 1.1 attempts. CJ McCollum, 41.2% on 7.9 attempts. Najee Marshall, 38.5% on 2.3 attempts. Trey Murphy, 37.3% on 7.7 attempts. Jose Alvarado, 37.3% on 3.4 attempts. Jordan Hawkins, 36.6% on 5 attempts. B.I., 35.7% on 3.8 attempts. Zion, 35.7% on 0.2 attempts. I guess you could question this one due to volume, but my point is you can't leave him. And Jonas Valanciunas, 34.6% on 1.5 attempts. The Pelicans saw the direction the NBA was going and also how that could help such a dynamic paint scorer in Zion and went all in on spacing. This is basically what I would do if I was an NBA GM. Having three superstars is great and all, but I think the NBA is moving towards two stars and ideal supporting cast. We're seeing this right now with Bradley Beal in Phoenix. He isn't bad himself, but how much can his 50 million plus a year be utilized alongside Booker and KD? Jokic and Murray put this mold on the biggest stage, and I believe many teams will follow suit. As far as my expectations for this team, with how deep and tight the West is, it's hard to say. I will probably pick them no matter their first round matchup, but if they end up in a 4-5 with the Clippers as it appears they will right now, it'll be tough to say. What I can say confidently is that this is a conference finals level team. Whether that actually happens or not, I can't say for sure due to the immense talent out West. But I still think they could, I just don't know if they're favored in the series against OKC, Minnesota, Denver, or the Clippers. Despite this, I might take the Pels against anyone but Denver, and even then I think they could make that interesting. No matter what happens this season, the Pelicans have found their formula and have a mostly very young core. Should they keep this mold somewhat, they will be a contender for years to come, and I cannot wait to watch Zion play playoff basketball. That's going to wrap this one up. If y'all enjoyed it, please like it up, sub to the channel, hit that naughty bell. I would really, really appreciate it. Comment down below. Uh, I don't know, clip. Uh, I got a little bag clip with me. And I'll catch y'all on the next one. I'm out. Peace.